G'day everyone, Sparky Dave here. Today I've got all of my tools laid out, as you can see. We're gonna go through them all. This is sort of an update video to my last tools video. By no means is this a complete tool set. Every year I'm adding things to it, so there will be new items every time I do one of these videos. But this is a complete electrician's toolkit. This is all the tools that you'll need to be out on your own. Now as I was laying these tools out, I realised I'm missing two things. One of them is my jib saw, that's gone missing. Um, also is my lockout kit, um, which is quite essential. But I have found a couple of lockout things that I can show you in lieu of the lockout kit. Uh, the lockout kit has padlocks and other safety features in it that you will need to isolate a system. Right, so first one here is our D-sized nitrogen bottle. This here is for pressure testing pipe work. You can also use it for brazing. These bottles will set you back about 450 bucks. This is an owned bottle, not a lease. For the aircon gear, my aircon stuff goes in this Irwin tool bag. Can hold all the gear well. And I never have it closed because it doesn't close when it's got all the gear in it. Round here, as you saw in my last video, is my Fat Max bag. Now these ones here, this is my second bag and they do fall apart too easily. And then in here I've got a redundant tool belt that I use to holster my tools that aren't on my main tool belt. Hopefully by the next video I will have buckets. I'm looking at getting the bucket tool tote systems and buying a few of those for my equipment for different areas of the trade. Anyway, moving back to it. This here is map gas. So this is the stuff you want to use for brazing. I use it for a lot of my heat shrinking too. Next thing on the ground here is a mitre box. This is a really cheap one. I've had it for many years and it's lasted. Uh, this one here is ideal for cutting trunking and capping into the right shapes at the same angles so you can connect the gear together and it matches perfectly. Next piece of equipment here are going to be the bending springs. I am missing one of the sizes, 5 sixteenths. So this one here is your smallest one which is quarter inch, 3 eighths, half, 5 eighths and 3 quarters. These bending springs go over your refrigeration pipe and then you can flex and bend them easily without them losing their shape and getting kinks. So these are really, really handy to have. Two adjustable crescents. I've got a 10 inch and a 12 inch. These are perfect for getting nuts off, undoing the pipe work that's pre-existing, things like that. I've got a steel rule here. I keep it in its casing just to protect the writing on it. G-clamp here, decent size one. This just helps hold things together when you're working on them. Down the back here, this here is my two-stage vacuum pump. It's uh, 142 litres per minute, a uh, master cool brand. It's one of the better quality vacuum pumps out there. I wouldn't go for anything less than 142 litres a minute, or you'll be sitting there all day. Next thing is this master cool nitrogen regulator. So this end here screws onto the nitrogen bottle over there and then this port on the side goes into your, where your manifold is. You want to get one with an input of about 4400 PSI. The best place to get these regulators for air conditioning is from your wholesalers, not from the companies that sell your bottles or you may end up with the wrong one. Next thing over here is a plumb bob that there uses gravity to create a level. This one here is brand new, I've never used it. Potentially if an outdoor unit's up on top of a building, might be using this to help run the capping straight down. Next thing over by the vacuum pump here, some vacuum pump oil. Always handy to have spare oil for your pump. And here I've got the uh, squirty end and a paper towel to wipe up any excess oil. Never use this on the carpet. The other thing you want this oil for is to do your flared ends. So once you've flared them, you can chuck a bit of oil on them and then chuck the nut on. This here is just an adapter from the nitrogen rig. This blue stuff is leak detector. This is just like soapy water. You spray it over any connection or joint in your pipework. And when you're pressure testing with the nitrogen, it's going to blow bubbles if it detects a leak. This here is coil cleaner to use for helping clean heat pumps. Further over here, this here is my eccentric flaring tool. The master cool ones are one of the better ones out there. Uh, these ones here also have a built-in clutch so you know when it's tight enough and you can unwind it. And that's just your clamp 
you put it on the right pipe size there from quarter up to three quarters and then in this box here i keep all types of end caps for pipes so if i ever need them out in the field i can just fire them on i know where they're kept they're always in that case the spare room in it so why not here we've got some emery cloth this is used when you're brazing so you can create a rough surface so the braze will stick to it better and i've got here a wet cloth that i always soak in water when i'm doing brazing just to cool the joint down before manipulating it and working with it these here are silphos so again this is for brazing super heat pipe work up that you want brazing then add this to it and it melts into it like solder down the back there this lovely set is a pipe expander tool it's a black max one so this is for five sixteenths you screw one of these onto it pipe goes on here and what you do is you squeeze it round rotate it a bit squeeze it again and you make perfect this one here black max brand does it absolutely perfectly on point every time so you don't need to edge off a wee bit you can actually do the full crimp on it roll of duct tape that is for just taping the insulation back over your pipes where you've separated them for whatever reason deburring tool you can do outside of pipe work or the internals any size these work perfect and leave no scratches on the inside of the copper so there is no chance of getting leaks in the future um, here we've got some fin combs and they're all different sizes therefore the fins the aluminium fins on the heat pump if they get damaged uh, you can attempt to straighten those fins out so we've got our schrader valve removal tool so you can unscrew the end take the schrader valve out with that end these bits undo in here so you can maintain pressure or vacuum that there goes on the end of this once all of this comes off which will screw onto either your low pressure or your high pressure side of your manifold it makes the jobs a lot quicker sometimes next piece of equipment is my pipe cutter set your pipe size goes around your pipe work and cuts them Barco cutting tools are pretty bloody good. Next thing I got here is my manifold. This one here is R32, R410A. It's master call. I've got a service access port on here, so I can throw my micron gauge on this end. Uh, that way it's on the load side of this uh, when I'm vacuuming down the system. And this here is my micron gauge. Need to run a digital micron gauge with a vacuum pump. This here will tell you if all the moisture has been evacuated from the system they are quite expensive this blue vac plus one it's not the pro one i want the pro but this one here was around 400 dollars i think always keep my blue vac one in this wee pouch that way it keeps it safe in the bag this here's my digital thermometer for servicing heat pumps and you can tell by what output temperature on heating and cooling it is predominantly on heating whether or not the unit needs regassing and that there lives as a client tools ir5 and i found it extremely useful so far works the way i need it to work so it's a good piece of equipment there right here i've got vernier calipers really handy measure internals and externals for these digital ones that way you can guarantee the reading on them and you don't need batteries always keep these in nice cases so they don't get busted and damaged and one of the last aircon tools here is my torque wrench set this is the torque wrench handle and of course these heads as soon as you hit the torque it'll click for you i do keep this manual in here because with different sizes although you get used to the couple that you use predominantly there are different settings for different sizes um here in english but yeah it's always handy just to keep that in the kit too just in case you ever have to refer back to it so that's the torque wrench kit it's a master call one again pretty much all of my aircon tools are master call next thing is my lead this one here is 20 meter lead 1.5 mil core there it goes hopefully you can see it's not blurry 3 by 1.5 mil uh, means it's capable of handling quite a bit more than your one mil standard uh, extension leads so down here i've got my access keys first key here is a 92268 now this one here is a switchboard handle like door key you can find on switchboards a lot Next key is a 405. There's a Snyder lock one. I think that's a, no, that's a data cabinet key. 
hasn't got a number on it. This one here is a KN101, just for their specific bits of equipment. Um, and then you've got your PDL144 key. I've got this multi key. I predominantly use this one here for switchboard doors. Although, if I don't have it on me, I just use my long nose pliers to open them like everyone else. This one here is for opening your ceiling hatches. This one here is a hen's tooth. And it's for opening up those massive stainless steel in-ground electrical covers. This is a waste disposal key for doing the adjustment on it. These here are my Allen keys. So I've got my Imperial set, Metric set, and Torque set. They're just off-brand ones from Mitre 10, I think. But they've lasted me years. And they're nice and compact and all kept together. In this case here is my security screws. You can see they've got the hollowed out bits in them. This is a cheap set. But I've made sure that all the hollowed out bits are pretty well centred. Mostly in the cheap sets they're not. You can see they're skewed off centred and things. like A bit like that one. The majority of them are centred. So it works perfect for what I need them for. Sweet. Next thing here. I've got my 300 piece Barco socket set. I've had these ones for years. And I've had them stolen so many times over the years. Hence the set looks brand new. Bloody good equipment. So I've got my volt detector. This one here is a Milwaukee old school one. I recommend these ones over the new Milwaukee ones. Not that I use these much anymore. Generally use my multimeter. So over here I've got my dust poles. These ones here I use as a backup. If I need to double check that my main multimeter is working effectively. They simply illuminate there as to what voltage they're reading at an outlet. Down here I've got my cable tracer. Throw it on tone. Turn that one on. And you can easily determine exactly what cable you're looking for. Next piece of equipment here is my Dymo label maker. I find it far superior to other label makers I've used in the past. Next thing I've got here is the Ferret Wi-Fi. Now I've already done a video on this showing how it works. So I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to go and check out that video. On here though, I always have the adapter end that goes on the end of my cable rods. As you can see, the cable rod goes straight into the end there. These cable rods here, we'll quickly go through them. They're just fiberglass rods and they're a meter long each. You can get into tight spaces with them and hook cables where you can't access yourself. In ceiling cavities where you're close to the feet and can't actually reach the cable there. You can use the hook end on it to hook the cables. Or you can thread cables up and down walls to light switches and things like that fairly easily. And in this wee pouch, I've got my laser distance meter. There's a Starrett one. I found it bloody handy for doing healthy homes heat pump measure ups. For the room sizes, window sizes, getting all the dimensions down for the calculations. I've also used it to where there's a two person job for measuring out downlights. This one here is 172 mil in length. I should probably put a sticker on the back of it for calculation purposes. Next tool here is a stud finder. I've owned this one for about 10 years and I can count on my fingers how many times I've actually used it. Here I've got a Klein tool circuit breaker finder. Use this on live circuit. So you plug one end the transmitter into the wall, go back to the switchboard, and this will identify what circuit that's plugged into. I've had about a 50-50 success rate with it. Also, this one here is prone to getting bumped and ends up wasting the batteries. I'm sure they would have redesigned these by now. Over here, I've got Klein Tools Laser Level. Now, I think this one's the best one on the market. It's got your cross lines in green, and then it's got your up dot and your down dot. So you can center this for doing down lights perfectly. Uh, also, it's got this wall mount for it. So you can run that up really high on high walls and mount it on the wall. It's got magnets on it, so it easily sticks there. Down in this corner, I've got all of my power tools. So I'll go through them one by one. I've got a Bosch heat gun down the back there. That one, there's a 230 volt. I use that for doing heat shrinks in areas where you shouldn't put much heat into the area around sensitive equipment, things like that. So that's the heat gun I was talking about. Fairly old one now. I've also got an off-brand jigsaw. It's perfect for cutting in to switchboard covers, switchboards, and also bench tops. The only alternative to it is using the multi-tool. 
which isn't as accurate. This here is the multi-tool I was talking about. So the blade on here oscillates when you power it on. Easy quick release system. So you can pull the lever back there and it will just release the blade. So you can pivot the blade or replace it with a different type and put it in. Simply clip it back in like that. Skill saw. Easily cuts timber for all sorts of mounting applications. Here's my Makita torch. You want to get the ones with the massive LED array on the front face of them. It is like a portable sun, especially when you take up into a roof space or underfloor, or if you're working at night. This one here is my reciprocating saw. It's got a good blade on the end of it. This here you can get into tight spots and cut thick timber with it. Over here I've got a drill handle and I should have a, another handle for the grinder somewhere. That there's the grinder, it's got the guard on it. Usually throw a handle on it there. Um, the disc here is worn down quite a bit, probably needs replaced. As you can see the difference in size after using it for a bit. Cutting steel and that's my spare grinding disc. This one here is a sanding disc so I have to take the guard off to run that one. Taking the paint off for earthing or roughing up edges for certain things. Down here I've got my three Makita batteries. I do need to buy a couple more. Yeah I don't have enough of these. Makita charger. I'll probably be upgrading this one to a dual charger at some stage. I've got my sight radio. This one here is perfect for doing commercial or residential pre-wires or even rewires if the customer's not home it doesn't have bluetooth it's one of the older sight radios probably upgrade that one at some stage now this one here you don't see many electricians with it's a planer i've used it twice now once for taking the thickness off timber where i needed to get a bit of timber in next to a switchboard and then also i've used it for leveling um, an in-ground box which was perfect for taking thickness off the timber there so these planers can come really handy but you wouldn't get much use out of them so you probably can't justify buying one for most tradesmen out there but they do have a good practical purpose in the trade over here is my hammer drill this one here i always leave my six mil bit in it i've had no problems with this one a makita drill now in my last video i had two drills I've gotten rid of both of them, upsized to one decent drill. Uh, this one's a DHP481. It does everything I need it to do. Gets in the tight spaces, but also it's got so much power, it just blasts through everything. Perfect for doing pre-wise. You need a couple of full batteries to do it. Uh, over here, I've got my impact driver. This one always has a square bit in the end of it. Lives like that. And that there is just for doing screws up. Over here I've got my Makita vacuum and this is an amazing piece of kit. Customers are always happy when you vacuum up. Make the place tidy. It only takes a couple of minutes. The site looks so much tidier than just using a shovel and brush. So this here is my mega multifunction tester. If you haven't seen my most recent uh, switchboard testing video go and watch that. I'll leave the link in the description as well. That video there, I go through most of the functions on it, show you how to test a complete installation. Down here is also some polarity testing gear that I created. Um, that is in that video too. This stuff here just lives in the mega case with the multifunction tester. And then up here is my 100 meter trailing lead, which is perfect for commercial, heavy commercial, industrial and um, residential, especially in doing COVs and testing new installations. This handy trailing lead's got a wee auxiliary stake attached to it. Just a quick demonstration. I've plugged the end into my multimeter. And we've got continuity. These trailing leads are really handy. They are the EFO ones. They do come in 50 or 100 meters. 100 meter ones are quite a bit more expensive, but you're paying for the amount of cable on it. Over here is my electrical safety equipment. So first of all, I've got my hazard board. That there's for doing jobs. You're gonna be there for more than a couple of days. And then also your hazard sign you have for most jobs. Down here, some disposable gloves. Nice white ones in there. Some mix of blue ones too. When you're installing down lights onto freshly painted ceilings, you don't wanna leave your fingerprints behind. So it's always a good idea to wear some nice clean gloves. I've got some spare batteries here. Now just check my nine volt ones and the tool I used before, but I do carry a couple nine volts. These ones here are triple A's and these are double A's so that whatever equipment I'm testing with, I've always got spare batteries. In this pile here, high-vis, disposable overalls if you're working around asbestos, 
for that matter i've got my dust mask with asbestos rated filters on it i will need to go and purchase new ones of those they look a bit worn i think i've had them for over three months now i've got some overalls there and of course a drop sheet Further down here, safety goggles. Now, I hardly wear those. I would wear them if I was drilling steel directly above me, so there's no chance of getting any into my eyes. But other than that, there's no other reason I personally use those for. I use safety glasses a lot. They're my standard safety glasses. Gloves, wear gloves to dirty work, hot work, brazing, things like that. Earmuffs, these are pretty new ones. Shout out to Huani. Always go with the best earmuffs you can. Can't compromise your hearing. Down here, as I said, I was missing my lockout system. So I've got some tags here. That I found out of service, do not operate ones, circuit breaker lockouts. So they screw onto the top of circuit breakers when they're in the off position and they lock them in the off position so no one can unintentionally turn the circuit on. I like having padlocks on me because it also ensures people can't really intentionally turn them on unless they bolt cut them off. I've got here disposable dust mask. Use those for crawling around in ceilings with. Over here's my hard hat. Always check manufacturing date on them. So that this one was made 2021 and the first month so january 2021 i believe you've got two years on these shovel and brush sweeping up after yourself and that's about it for the safety gear i've got these hippo wipes uh, same as wonder wipes just clean your hands up with them cleans off unwanted solvents and things yeah decent decent wipes sweet so the next thing we'll go through is the solvents Here's my corking gun, and I've got some clear silicon in it, translucent stuff. I also carry around black silicon sealant and white silicon sealant. That's just for waterproofing applications, making things look nice. I've got some wire pulling lube here. This one's water-based. It might not ruin paint if it gets on it. I hardly use this stuff. I more like to use cable glide. Cable glide, you don't want to get on people's paintwork but it's mint. You don't get it all over your hands when you put it on the cables. So you can just spray it on cables when you're pulling it through dwangs, through holes and dwangs and things like that. Uh, past other cables, it helps prevent them from burning on each other. Sometimes jobs that are barely possible, it makes possible. So it's really, really handy to have that stuff. Here's some conduit glue that welds your plastic conduits together, forming a watertight seal underground, things like that. Once you put conduit glue on, you will not be able to remove it. Next here, smoke alarm test spray for testing smoke alarms with, ensuring the sensors are working. Bizline refill for my chalk line. I got some spark filler here for when you or the apprentice accidentally puts a hole in a wall or ceiling where it's not meant to be. Cover it up with this stuff as long as it's a tiny, tiny hole. Appliance white spray paint. This here, if you get a scratch mark or want to make an appliance look nice, you can touch it up with a wee bit of appliance white. Dazzle, when pre-wiring a house, you can quickly spray this and mark the floor on the concrete exactly where your flush boxes are on the walls so you don't lose them. Shaving foam, I spray this around all asbestos work. I'm cutting with any type of hole saw or drilling with the drill bit on top of using protective gear silicon spray it's got a lot of water resistant properties to it good for using on rubber seals electrical equipment things like that we've got some super strong bonding sealant kind of like liquid nails bond stuff together i've got fire krill this is fire rated sealant for switchboards and going through fireproof membranes got some refill for my gas torch butane refill contact cleaner using on circuit boards things like that aerosol adhesive we use this for and this is a backup one this was what was left doing underfloor heating elements tacking them to the floor for the tilers come and grab the tiles over them and wd-40 good at anything same as crc so here i have a wee spray bottle i fill with water and spray it on these core drills this is a wee core drill set it was cheap as 25 bucks for the whole set and it's bloody good quality. The bits in it I've only used for aircon, but you can see it goes from 33 to 73. There's four bits in it. Not very big, but it's done what I need it to do so far. Next thing I have here is electrical tape. I only use red electrical tape these days. The red stuff you can actually write on it in permanent marker. Plus, it looks like a warning label colour. 
So when you put it over white cables or any other kind of cables, people see red and they immediately think it's danger. Duct tape, this used for all ducting, HRV systems, range hood ducting, bathroom fans. The 3M stuff is the best quality stuff. Down here, I've got various sizes of hole saws, carbide tip ones for going through Suffetes and then general ones for going through timber or jib board, sometimes steel. I got a 65mm carbide for heat pumps, not sure where that one's gone at the minute. All the smaller ones for conduit work or other things like that. This one here, 92 for 90mm downlights, 100mm or 105 for doing 100mm applications, 152 for your 150mm indoor things, 159 and that's your outdoor grills. This one here is a 160mm hole saw and that one there's specifically for doing Vinco bathroom fan sets where the cutouts are a bit bigger than your standard 152mm ones. And then I've also got this hole saw dust catcher and this one here works amazing. So you throw the hole saw on the inside of the dust catcher that collects all of the dust. Nothing escapes when you're making a hole. It gets rid of the need for drop sheets. So I highly recommend getting one of these. They're about 50 odd bucks. Next items here are my drill bits. I generally use spade bits. So I've got different types of spade bits here. 20s, 22s and 25. I always use those. Down here I've got a lot of 6mm and 5mm drill bits. And especially a nice long one for getting in hard to reach areas. I've got my big 10 to 13 mil bits here. I use these quite a lot on switchboards, older switchboards and things. Then I've got a couple of spare bits for my hole saws. Bits here for my impact driver. I've got two number two Phillips and I've got a spare number two square for it. I've got some spare multi-tool blades. That one there needs replacing. Ceramic gear, which is actually destroyed. One of my tile bits, I need to get a new one. Also this one's buggered. This one here is a diamond tip tile bit. So the spade one, you can drill straight through on. The diamond bit, you need to start on an angle before drilling in. And then I've got a glass cutter here, which I haven't actually used yet. My advice is if you have to cut through glass, get someone else in to do it. They'll be insured to do it properly and you'll know and they'll know exactly what they're doing. Over here, uh, my masonry bits so i got a few bits here that one's an imperial one i uh, got a big 10 mil bit a small 8 mil a 12 mil and a nice 29 mil bit this works perfectly for running 25 mil conduit through it so i use this one quite often then i've got my auger bit 25 mil auger pre-drilling holes i don't tend to use this much anymore I prefer the spade bits, but that one always lives in the bottom of my tool bag. Here I've got my extension bits, and they can just clip together. Uh, so I've got a nice short one there. Uh, 150 mil, I think. Medium size one, and then a nice long one. I need to get two more of these for going down walls and things. But no matter what kind of kit you've got to drill down dwangs, there's always the chance it could slip out your drill end. Other than that, I've got this nice long Rex Price drill bit. Mainly use this for going down to light switches for lighting cables if I'm only running one cable or if I'm drilling up for PIRs for security. In this case here is just a whole lot of spare drill bits. There's not many left. And then there's also spare bits for the impact driver in here. This kit here is my tap and die set. You can make threaded rod with these or you can make bolt holes that you can screw bolts into on switchboards and things so having one of these kits is a good idea especially if you do a lot of switchboards that one there's a frost brand same brand as this drill bits so you know it's a decent brand sweet so the next tools over here are the bigger tools first off the bending springs these are for bending conduit you thread them inside the conduit heat the conduit up with a heat gun or gas torch and manipulate the conduit to whatever shape you want and then you can pull these bending springs out. There's a 20 mil and this one's a 25 mil. Then behind them, I have two levels. So I've got a decent size level. This one here, I use for doing my aircon trunking. And then the smaller level here, I use for doing heated tower rails and any conduit work. Behind that is the sight broom. Just to sweep up the sight once you finish working. 
I have a 50 meter spooler tape handy for measuring things perfectly outdoors or long distances and maybe in a place where it's difficult where you have to zigzag around all the time so these are perfect to use shovels I've got a small spade and a big shovel small spade is for getting into tighter areas don't get as much leverage it's not as effective as using the bigger spade when digging holes trenches behind that is some bolt cutters cutting chain padlocks you hardly need to use them but they're bloody handy to have sledgehammer this here's for whacking your main earth stakes in and then behind that is cable roller now this one here you can use for putting the big mains cable 16 mil one core neutral screen drum on it uh, it takes up the whole thing but it does fit on there this one here is just a floor mounted one the drums simply get chucked on it and you can roll them off alrighty next tools we'll go through just some marking utensils couple of pens builders pencil mark everything up with that this retractable pencil can be for doing deeper holes in plastic fittings smaller pencil there pastel so that one there you can mark out where your flush boxes and lights are in new builds before you dazzle or even if you choose not to dazzle you just mark them out on the concrete and then you've got mark pen for labeling things stanley knife tape measure and small level then I've got two smaller screwdrivers. So one of them is a number one Phillips and one of them is even smaller. And they're both for working on circuit boards with. And then I've got three stubby screwdrivers, one of each type. So a slotted or flathead, square and Phillips. And then I've got all of my screwdrivers here. This one here I was given as a number one and it's a posi plus a slotted so it's one of those circuit breaker ones but we don't have any of those really that we ever would use it for so it sits there doing nothing this one here is my number two phillips it's the new type they're all weeha the brand of these and this one's the slim one so you don't need to cut the insulation back like i have on these ones to fit it down in deep boxes so the new design on the weeha ones are really good and they're my favorite ones by far as opposed to brands that look like these um this one here is a wearer and it's a bottle opener in my previous videos i have outlined my tool belt this is my basic tool belt i take it in everywhere and it just contains the essential tools what i'll do is throw them the bits and pieces in it as i go screwdriver Phillips number two there. This here is my posi number two. That one there lives in my tool bag. And then I've got flat heads or slotteds. So flathead screwdriver is the smallest one. I think that's three mil. That one there goes in the tool belt. Four mil, that goes in my tool bag. This one here is my favorite one. Gets used all the time. So it goes in my tool belt. And then these two bigger flat heads, perfect for undoing nice big screws. They live in my tool bag. Number one square for undoing those annoying screws people use for security and other things. Then I've got my number two square used all the time. So that one goes in the tool belt. Got a nice chunky flathead here. Uh, this screwdriver here is actually used to go along with my element key. This is an element key and it's to remove hot water cylinder elements. So the screwdriver goes through it. Gives me a good torque base so I can unscrew and screw in hot water cylinder elements. This element key here lives in my tool bag with the solvents. These are about $30 from your plumbing wholesaler. Next tool is my multimeter. This is a Klein Tool CL800 and it's the one I use for everything. You can diagnose a lot with it. So this one here goes straight on the tool belt. Next ones are my long nose pliers. They make it nice and easy to reach through small holes and pull cables out. You can also pick things up with them. Really practical and useful tool. And I use them a lot, so they go on the tool belt too. Then's my side cutters. This brand is Nipix. The long nose pliers are the same, and so are the pliers. Now these are my tools of choice. I prefer them because you can spin it in one hand. The insulation is not rated to a thousand volts. So they're good handy ones to use for everyday applications. But if you're working around live cables, you probably want to go for a thousand volt rated ones. They're much bigger and bulkier. These pliers live in my tool bag as opposed to in my tool belt. So that's the tool belt fully kitted out. It's got the bare essentials on it. All right, down here, I've got some vice grip cable strippers. These strip anything up to six mil and just make the job so easy. 
I use these when doing switchboards or when I've got a lot of cables in the same place where I can just bang all the calls off at one time. Really handy with one mil. If the one mil cables are getting too short to play around with with your side cutters, get this in there, pull the insulation off. It doesn't nick the copper at all, so you can always twist it up nicely. Next tool here is my multi grips. Uh, they're lockable ones, so you slide them to the desired size of the nut, and then you can lock it shut and use them that way. Bloody good tool. Cable cutters, I generally cut 16 mils, neutral screens, things like that with them. Solid tool. Here I have my conduit cutters. Just cut conduit pipe with these, nothing else. This here is a swivel blade cable stripper. Pretty much pop that up, cable goes in there so you can cut around, rotate the blade and then cut straight. This here is a cable tie gun. Puts tension on the cable ties and cuts the ends off. Really good quality brand. This one's Eastwood, all steel. Right down the back here, Crescents. This one here is my favorite. It's the Barco one. The jaws open really wide, just over 30 mil, and it's a really small handle, so you can get into tight spaces. These are just an eight inch and a six inch. Some graphite paste and a bit of hemp where you're pulling fixed plumbing appliances out, blocking them off so you can service them. And then also some thread tape and the thread tape's also used for pressure fittings as well. The rest of the stuff here is TV, data, electronics sort of tools and also my crimping gear. Down the back here, I've got my PCB board holder. It's a wee soldering setup. They're relatively inexpensive. This just holds your boards while you solder. There is a wee light on it actually. I don't use it. Soldering iron is a wee Dremel gas torch. Heats up nice and quick too, the wee gas ones. I've got some solder and some copper desoldering wick. So this here removes the solder. Heat sink compound, use a lot for thermostats and appliances. That's about it, but it does have many other applications. We paintbrush here just to dust things off. Toolkit here. Now this one here has got little micro bits in it, all for electronics and getting access to small screws. The next thing is this digital TV finder. You plug on the end of an antenna and you can angle the antenna around until you find it'll light up with the strongest signal on the wee light display here. This is my cheap cable tester. You put one on one end of an ethernet cable, one on the other end of the installation and just test to ensure that you've got the right terminals hooked up. This is my Ethernet Cat 6 crimper. And then this one here is my special Cat 6A crimper. They are constructed differently. The teeth bite down deeper on this one. And this one here has got a different mechanism altogether for crimping. This one here is my compression crimper. So at the moment I've got an F-type compression fitting on it for doing TV aerials. I have got spare ones here for RCA and BNC fittings and there's an IEC one there. Punch down tool for punching down the data wires and phone jacks and other data fittings. Coax stripper. So this one here you just use on your coax cables and it strips them off to the right sizes. Got a data cable stripper. This one here is adjustable to different sizes, different types of data cables. And this here is similar, it's just a fixed wee one. This one will probably get taken out of my kit. Uh, I don't use it. The next items here are my crimpers. Here I've got a hex crimper, which goes from six mil up to 50 mil. I've got a super lug crimper for the super lugs. I've got a Utilux crimper here for the Utilux crimp links and lugs. And then I've got a little boot lace or ferrule crimper which does from 0, uh, 0.75 to 10 mil. And these crimpers here live in the bottom of my screw tray. I'll give you a quick rundown on the screw tray. I do have a video already of it, which I'll put the link down in the description. Spare leads for the multimeter, brand new ones. Always have a spare pair on you because you can just stuff them within a day. 
So this is my screw tray. In the bottom here is all my heat shrinks. Try and keep it as organized as possible. It does get pretty out of shape sometimes. Got some cable tie mounts in the bottom. Cat 6 fitting ethernet ends. Cat 6A ethernet ends. Boot lace ends. I keep one three-way splitter for aerials. Cable ties, black and white. And then a whole lot of squishies for phone connectors. The other thing I keep in the screw tray is some earth sleeving. The downside to this type of screw tray is they got plastic fittings in the ends here which snap quite easily so I'm going to replace them with steel bolts the handles obviously not existent on it at the moment so I need to fix that but otherwise it keeps everything nicely organized and you can take these trays out really easily this one here is a tactics box other things I keep in here is fuse wire and rubbers erasers for rubbing out pencil marks on walls or other fingerprints and marks that you leave behind you can actually rub them out with these make sure it's not a plastic one the plastic ones just smear and smudge so yeah if you want to go through all the rest of it go and check out the other video it goes through every compartment in here and tells you exactly what each thing is for down the back here i've got my hose bit of water still in it uh, this one here isn't your typical 10 mil garden hose it's a lot thicker than that it's probably about 16 or 20 mil this one here is for draining hot water cylinders uh, in order to change the hot water cylinder element and then over in the background there is a hot water pump I don't use it very often at all anymore it was more for when you've got a smaller hose to help pump down the hot water cylinder because it does take quite a lot of time but this hose halves the time anyway. If you do use a pump, you've got to make sure you've got enough air flowing back into the cylinder. Otherwise, you run the risk of it imploding. And now the final lot of tools. Hammer. Nail puller. Like a mini crowbar. Vice grips. These here for locking things together. So you can cut them, drill them. Whatever you're working on. Hand rivet throwing rivets in between sheets of metal tin snips for cutting metal especially color steel roofing and things where you're doing through roof kits chalk line here blue one as it doesn't show through the paint when the ceiling's painted this here is really for doing down lights and getting them all in a perfect row now that i've got a laser level this might not be used as often as it used to be deburring tool this one here is for everything that's not HVAC. Build a string line, making sure things are level. You can just use that however you want. Over here I've got my chisels, different sizes. That one there's stuff, I'll get rid of it. Probably sharpen it up. These are nice wood chisels, chiseling out timber. And then we've got a cold chisel over here for chiseling out masonry. Two files, this one here I use quite often. Flat side, curved side, just use the flat side generally. Small file for filing down drilled holes. Two punches, these center punches, you can tap nails down beneath the paint line or plaster line. Hacksaw, cutting steel. Coping saw, cutting wood and especially in fine places. It's also got some metal ones but I haven't chucked them on it. And then a good hand saw, nice long sturdy one, cutting timber. Small builder's square here, getting perfect 90 degree angles on things. Nails. These are for new builds, whack them in the corners and slit your cables on them. Just a normal rag, use it for anything, wiping up crap. Down here I've got my head torch, my good ones actually no, I don't use on the tools. And then I've got this as the last thing, is a wee suction cup. And this is for picking up glass tiles. I needed it to access some light bulbs. Uh, it's not something I generally carry around, but sometimes you can't lift glass tiles with anything else other than these. And that wraps it up. Cheers for watching guys. Catch you on the next one.